say you've probably heard the debate of how much running can be attributed to your mental game and how much is actually physical. And if you're a new runner, you might be thinking, ugh, mental? I can't run for five minutes without being out of breath. It's definitely more physical. Well guys, if you have been running for a while, then maybe you've experienced that mental side of it where you know you have to have a strong mental game in order to continue. That mental game plays different roles depending on where we are in any stage of our run, even before the run. If you don't feel like running, but you have a workout to do, if you've got a run on the schedule that needs to be knocked out, there's nothing physical with getting out there and getting ready for your run, it's all mental. And on the other hand, if you are absolutely gagging to get out there, you might have a really easy time in the beginning. But then as the run goes on, you start getting tired, you start getting fatigued. That's when the mental side of things kind of kicks in. And you may have heard the old running adage that running is 90% mental, the rest is in your head. Clearly indicating that there's a big mental component to running. Well, in this video, we're gonna be answering the question of how much running is mental and how much is physical by looking at some scientific studies. And this came to my attention after seeing an article in Outside Online. Now, the article was written by Alex Hutchinson. And again, if you are looking for any science-based running data, Alex Hutchinson is the guy to go to. This guy covers it all. So the article is titled, Researchers are quantifying cycling's mind versus body debate. And I know what you're thinking, Matt, this article is talking about cycling and this is a running channel. What are you talking about? Well, I'm gonna take some artistic license and I'm gonna tweak these results in order to fit my agenda. My agenda happens to be running, much like yours, but I don't think that's too big of a stretch. Ultimately, what we're coming down to is physical performance and moreover, physical performance and mental performance. So with that said, it shouldn't really matter whether the sport is cycling or running. The mental components are gonna be very similar and the physiological components are also going to be very similar. So first of all, let's go back in time just a little bit to 2010. 2010 is the time when a study was done titled Test of the Classic Model for Predicting Endurance Running Performance. This study is getting on a bit, but the results still stand. This study used 17 participants, 10 male and seven females. So admittedly, it's a small sample size and they underwent a 16 kilometer time trial in which VO2 max running economy, percentage of oxygen uptake at lactate threshold, running velocity at lactate threshold and peak treadmill velocity. So we all know by now that VO2 max is the gold standard when it comes to evaluating aerobic performance. And I know you know this, but just in case you forgot, VO2 max actually quantifies how quickly your heart and lungs can deliver oxygen to be used by your muscles. And in this study of 17 participants, the women had an average VO2 max of 63, while the men had an average VO2 max of 71. So clearly with these VO2 max numbers, we are nearing elite level, whatever that actually means. I'm not gonna keep you in suspense, but it was found that 81.3% of these athletes' performance could be attributed to VO2 max. Is that the right way of saying it? Well, perhaps it's better to say how the study actually says it. VO2 max explained 81.3% of the total variance and running economy accounted for an additional 10.7%. So that's pretty impressive. These are pretty impressive numbers. And you would think by hearing that, if this was the only thing I was telling you, you would think, well, obviously Matt, VO2 max accounts for 80% of my performance. And well, based on this data, that would be an expected conclusion. It's not quite right. It is missing something pretty important because this study says that 81.3% of the athlete's performance is explained by their VO2 max, makes the assumption that the psychological aspect had no impact whatsoever. And we both know that's not true. So along comes the second study, and the second study was actually published in January of 2022. And this study is titled Body and Mind, Exploring Physiological and Psychological Factors to Explain Endurance Performance in Cycling. Again, wherever you see the word cycling, I want you to replace it with running. Let's make this work for us. Okay, this study looked at 25 athletes on the Swiss under 17 national cycling team. So as well as measuring an athlete's physiological attributes like VO2 max, these researchers also measured five psychological variables. Now these psychological factors were measured using psychological questionnaires and they were quantified on a one to five or a one to seven scale. Okay, so that's how we turn these feelings into numbers. And the athletes were asked about mental techniques, which includes the use of self-talk, imagery, relaxation, getting pumped up before the event and goal setting. They measured self-compassion, which evaluated how the athletes handle making mistakes. They looked at mental toughness, which includes perseverance, how they rebound after failure, and how they think they will perform when conditions are tough. The psychological study looked at achievement motivation, and achievement motivation measures how much the athletes have a need for success and whether or not they strive for excellence. And finally, the psychological study looked at action and state orientation. And basically having an action orientation means that you can refocus quickly, you can get back to the task at hand after you make a mistake. If you have a state orientation, it means you have a tendency to dwell on mistakes and you don't move on as quickly. So the actual experiment that the participants did was relatively short. It was a 1,320 meter climb, which is about three quarters of a mile. And over that distance, the elevation increased 
increased by 1800 feet and the researchers chose an uphill time trial to eliminate the effects of drafting and air resistance. So what they find? Let's get down to it. Now if you were a betting person you would probably place money on that VO2 max was the biggest predictor and in this case you'd be right. You just won. VO2 max in this case explained 48% of the variance which is significantly lower than the last experiment back in 2010 where it explained 83% of the variance. But here's the thing that is most surprising and this is what I want you to take away. And the reason I want you to take away this next part is because VO2 max, although it can be increased through training, there is a limit. VO2 max is largely genetic. So let's say you have a VO2 max of say 50. It's highly improbable that you are going to raise that to 70, 80, where the world-class athletes are. Okay, I don't want you to feel bad about it. It's, it's totally normal. But here's what you can change. Because out of all the psychological metrics that were measured, perseverance had the biggest effect. Now, perseverance is largely a personality trait, but I would argue that that is something that we can work on. That is something that we can work towards if we want to better ourselves. And it turns out that perseverance had a coefficient of 0.11, which is roughly a quarter of the VO2 max. So while VO2 max is is the lion's share of predictive ability for success in endurance events. Perseverance is not nothing. And if you can work on your perseverance, if you can build on that, then you will be successful. You will be more successful. So here's the thing about VO2 max. Although VO2 max is a great predictor of athletic performance, it's only a great predictor of athletic performance when we look at the population as a whole. So if you are walking down the streets of New York and you just grab two random people, it is likely that the person with the higher VO2 max is going to do better. But when we come down to athletes that are well-trained, the differences are not as pronounced. So obviously we have some athletes that have a astoundingly high VO2 max, but we have other professional athletes that have a lower than expected VO2 max. So something else must be contributing to their success. Can't just put it down to the VO2 max number. And here is one last surprising thing that was found in this study. People that reported using mental relaxation techniques during the time trial actually performed worse. Now while we have to take into account the sample size and the coefficient of this relaxation techniques being only 0.03, making the VO2 max a 16 times better predictor than the relaxation techniques, it's still something to think about. And although I will be thinking about that when, let's say I'm getting a little anxious at the start of a race, I don't want to be doing relaxation techniques, Alex does point out that this could be a statistical fluke, or it could also be that the weaker, more anxious athletes are actually the ones telling themselves to calm down before the start of a race. What I mean is it could have nothing to do with the relaxation techniques, it could just be that the weaker athletes have a little more anxiety, and those are the ones that are using the relaxation techniques. And with that scientific study, we have found that that VO2 max accounts for 3.4 times explanatory power of performance over psychological metrics. And while you may want to just switch off the video here because you think you have the results, I caution you to hold on for just one second. And I also want you to take this with a pinch of salt because even though I've explained these psychological metrics and this study using a very short course with a very small sample size, there are so many variables that differ in you and I. And I think the most important one is the amount of time that we're out there. So look at it this way. If you go out and you run 100 meters as fast as you can, there are likely isn't going to be time for you to start thinking about come on push on through it's going to be all physical from the second you start that 100 meters you've got the end in sight but now i want you to think about racing a marathon when you are likely going to be out there for hours and hours and hours now while vo2 max is still a solid predictor of marathon time with an event where you're going to be out there for hours and hours and hours you're going to have to rely on some psychological tips and tricks to get you through the ups and downs of that race so like most of what i talk about most of the scientific studies that i tell you it depends it depends on a lot of factors Yes, VO2 max does count for a lot, but the psychological side of running also counts for a lot. And I think it counts for a lot more than this study found it to be, at least in our sport, at least in our distances. So guys, I want to hear from you. I want to hear about your mental tips and tricks. What do you use to push through when things get tough during a race? And do you think those mental tips actually work? Finally, if you had to put a number on your race performance, physical and mental, how much weight would you give both? Let me know in the comments. All right, my friends, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Drop new videos at least twice a week. Be kind be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.